I'm Stephen Dupont and I'm a documentary photographer and filmmaker. Photography is something that you, you, you never stop learning. You're always thinking of new and wonderful creative ways to show your pictures. I guess I began my journey back in, well back when I was a te a, a, you know, late teen, so I was 18 and I went travelling for a year, backpack and some cash and just myself. I had this itinerary to go around the world and, and, and just see some amazing places for the first time. So, you know, someone coming out of school, it was all incredibly exciting and new and, and also frightening as well, I guess. Photography was, was something I loved and, and so I decided to, um, you know, to, to basically make that a mission when I came home from that trip to whatever means possible to become a photographer and that that started it all off and um, it was in April of uh, late April of 2008 I was with a um, poppy eradication team uh, in Afghanistan so traveling with some Afghan anti-narcotics police in uh, a province called Nangarhar province I was working on a story for the Smithsonian magazine we um, went out on a mission uh, outside of the city of Jalalabad uh, on this day and we were in a convoy of police vehicles and we were in one of the police vehicles of course. We got to uh, a small town called Konyani which is uh, kind of east of Jalalabad toward the Pakistan border but we stopped there for about an I guess about 40 minutes before um, there was a, a major explosion which happened to be um, a, a suicide bomber, a young boy um, I believed who was, I was told later was selling newspapers and was strapped with explosives. He wouldn't have been more than 12 years old. The results of that suicide bombing was um, I think around 30 people were killed. Uh, maybe more because there were wounded that went to hospital that may not have survived. We were actually sitting inside a vehicle, one of the police trucks when the explosion happened about five meters or so away, so it was very close. Um, I was um, relatively unscathed uh, physically and uh, as I came to I heard gunfire and saw people running um, so I got the feeling that we were under fire, which we were. <laughs> so I ran out of, I, I, I left the vehicle and ran to where I saw other people running, the police, and um, hunkered down behind a kind of a mound of dirt while all of this chaos was going on. Uh, blood was running down my face. I was wounded, but I didn't know how serious. I was touching myself up to see if there was any big holes in my head or obviously I was you know, on, on adrenaline and I was in deep shock as well but I was clear enough to take photographs and continue working uh, and to begin working to, to start photographing what was going on, all the chaos. So I started shooting um, and I saw chaos, you know, I saw people running from the, the scene of the destruction, I saw bodies all over the, the road and um, I, I worked out then that it had been a suicide bombing. And then I, I, you know, I was um, doing a lot of video work of what had happened and I decided to narrate what I felt had happened then to the video camera as a sort of a diary. And then from that 30 minutes of footage, so when I got back to Australia, I went and saw the ABC and saw Mark Corcoran and showed him the footage and that ended up being that, a survivor's tale story that was on the ABC on Foreign Correspondent. I mean watching the footage itself was you know, it was incredibly I guess quite traumatic to actually see it again but again I felt I, I guess I felt quite in a way felt detached as well um, yeah, I guess I just kept thinking it was so good to be alive because it was so close you know, it was so close to being killed so for me there was that reassurance and also that Paul was alive was a big thing my part you know my my colleague 
because he got pretty badly wounded and, and I was happy that he'd survived, happy that we both survived. Um, I think there'll always be that sort of memory of trauma which um, will always be there but it's, I wouldn't sort of, you know, it, it doesn't keep me awake at night, it doesn't sort of um, change my direction in my career or um, probably makes me think a bit more about the dangers of, of the risks that one takes when we go into these places. Um, it's a good question, being attached to photographs or being attached to the people in the photographs. I, I wouldn't say I'm attached to the, the people in a reality sense, um, but as a photographer you need to really focus on why you're there and that's to take photographs and to document that history or that event and somehow produce something that will um, you know, justify your whole being there um, to, um, you know, make highlight of, of the situation and have those pictures published to tell a story, to, you know, um, make some changes or, you know, to, to just get a voice out there. So, so there really is that detachment from the beginning, you know, certain photographs that I'm proud of, there's an attachment toward the craft and the, the actual object and the photographs themselves. Um, the only attachment to people would be to those that I have a personal connection with, um, which are often not taken in war zones. Well, camera's always a shield. I mean, you know, in any situation that you're in, when you're photographing um, or shooting video, I mean, cam cameras are a shield from the reality of what's going on. Um, my work is hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> um, I think it's I think it's an interesting way to describe the work. I always try and f sort of look for um, some sense of humanity which will bring out you know that out of the photographs no matter how hard they are to look at. Um, so I think that there's with, with that kind of humanity I'm looking for some beauty in the horror. I'm looking for something, some, some light that comes out of the darkness.